I'm Liz Gunn and welcome to this New Zealand Loyal Post election update, the first of two election updates. In my previous video, just before the election went ahead, I stated that I would, straight after the election, release information that would shock you, the mother of all revelations, more. There were many demanding that the information be released before the election, but that was not able to be facilitated. The whistleblower's words to us were that it would be published after the election. I also had deep concerns around the trauma the information would cause on the eve of the election, and to me it felt unethical to exploit such traumatic information for our own political gain. Well, we have now come to an undisclosed location with a New Zealand clinician mathematician who is very experienced in statistical analysis. That person has with us reviewed the data and confirms our position that it is damning. The figures show that there are tens of thousands of deaths linked to the jabs. And this is just one of the sites recording this type of information in New Zealand. We don't know how many further databases like this are in the country. So it follows that as the deaths are usually less than the numbers of side effects, then the extrapolation of the numbers of injured and dead Kiwis starts to become frankly eye-watering. We saw in the data that there are many clusters of deaths, people who attended the same jab site and were jabbed one after the other at consecutive times on the same day. We saw their jab date. We saw their date of death. Let me give you just one of many examples. On one day, 30 people were jabbed on the same day at the same location. All are now deceased and their deaths are in close temporal time proximity to each other. That's, that's 30, that's all players in a rugby match on the field suddenly dead. You see, statistically, the numbers of deaths we saw cannot be attributed to natural causes given same site and same date of vaccination. It would be what they say statistically, highly unlikely. We are calling for an inquiry, not just any inquiry, a full-blown criminal investigation leaving no stone unturned. New Zealand is a crime scene. Computers of anyone associated with this COVID response rollout in any capacity, mobile phones, communications, bank accounts, archives, and a whole host of other targeted information must be seized. We have OIA evidence, Official Information Act evidence, that the government knew every side effect before one single jab was given in New Zealand. So this evidence lays waste to the safe and effective narrative. It also underlines the gravity and enormity of what I have just stated in this statement. The OIA evidence we have is attached underneath this post on the nzloyal.org.nz site. But there's one thing for sure. There should be no more jabs administered in this country. So many lives have been lost. We saw 13 children on the list that we have examined alone. Since this whistleblower approached me saying they wanted me to release this once I was in Parliament, I have wanted to have this data released immediately. Why? Because clearly, once it fully goes out to you, the public, it would prevent any more loss of life. In fact, so committed am I to stopping any further murder by needle in this country that I was willing to put my face and my name on the line on the eve of the election. I have seen the information firsthand. I have struggled sleeping at night since then, knowing that this level of detail is now available, but as we find today, being withheld. You see, whistleblowers always face great risk, as we all do, who seek to bring the truth to the people of this country under urgency. 
I cannot comprehend why when there is ongoing harm that this data is not released immediately to bring an end to that harm and to launch a full-blown criminal investigation. So I'm appealing to you, the people of New Zealand. You must all demand an end to the jabs. If not addressed urgently, the World Health Organization will be able to declare the next pandemic and force mass jab compliance under the Pandemic Preparedness Act, which will soon be a reality. Research that. It's also critical that you understand the difference between an inquiry per se, which is what Winston Peters has called for, and what we call for, a criminal investigation. Inquiries often lead to narrow terms of reference, and they can risk just being a whitewash, where they're seen to be doing something, but there's little or no change as a result. By contrast, criminal investigations involve seizure and an in-depth examination and exposure of all facts. What I will do, New Zealand, should this whistleblower finally find the drive that we are showing at New Zealand Loyal, the determination that we have, and approach me again and say they will divulge it all, what I will do is take that information to Winston Peters. I'm not looking for anything from this other than what I always look for, which is to serve my country. I will willingly offer it to Winston Peters should they find the courage to fully open up with what we have seen today. And I will hope that Winston gets, along with the hard work of exposing it, I would hope that he gets all the glory as well. What I want more than anything is for these truths to be brought to you, the people of New Zealand. And my final word today would be this. I pray that at last the backbiting can stop the nastiness, the undermining of one another can stop and that this issue, this important, crucial standing together, finally unites us all, New Zealand, and that we stand up to this new government and say we demand a full exposure of the truth.